One of the most useful tricks that I can think of is called go to place. Um, it's where on cue your dog goes to a mat or a cot or a bed to relax and remain until they're released. Um, I just have this, when, when Joan said we were going to do a trick video and I had this fantasy that all 12 week old Norwich would go from their birth home to their adopted home with a few simple tricks. Um, puppy come, <laughs> puppy sit, potty on command, and go to place. And I think that's such a beautiful thought because of the safety and the security that that would bring to our dogs as they go to their new homes. Safety, uh, for one thing, is you can put this go to place on a doorbell cue. So in a lot of houses, the doorbell goes off and it's pandemonium. And uh, there's barking and there's jumping on the guests and um, God forbid running out the door and getting into some trouble out there. Um, it, and visitors who might, uh, you know, be frail and not able to make it past the dogs that are jumping on them and things like that. Um, security, from a security standpoint, um, just being able to know that, you know, I'm going to go and lay on my place and that's a good thing and I'm good there and nobody will, will interfere with me. Um, I right now have a 13 year old Norwich and, um, uh, an elderly dog and he loves to pick up after us while we cook in the kitchen. Um, he's just not as quick to get in and out as he used to be and we find ourselves tripping over him and I think what a great idea it would have been if I had trained him on go to place just from the start and he would know that that's you can be in the kitchen you're a good dog in the kitchen as long as you're in place unless we release you. Um, and I, I, I kick myself for not teaching him that, but I, but I have taught others. Um, so the technique that we're going to use um, to teach go to place is um, the shaping technique. Three main techniques, or at least three main techniques that we know of, right? Capturing, luring, and shaping. Capturing, that's the one that we use um, when we're teaching uh, to put potty on command. Um, when you see the dog do something that they naturally do and you want to capitalize on that, you want to capture it. So you reward and get excited and put a name with that behavior of theirs. Um, luring, um, luring is maybe with a leash or with a food lure. Can I lure their nose to, to the place where I want them? Um, if, you, if you Google go to place on YouTube or search it on YouTube, I guess, um, you will find people teaching go to place using a leash and lead them up onto the place with the leash. You'll also see them luring on with food. Um, here's why I want to teach Norwich with shaping. They're so clever and they're very food motivated. And performance trainers know, right? All of us that are on this call know that what a dog teaches himself he never forgets. So while shaping might be a little bit more of an investment on the front end, it's a lifelong skill. And um, so it's, it's worth time to put in on the front. So uh, in order to do some shaping, we need a little bit of vocabulary. So the first thing we need is our positive reward marker. It marks where I'm gonna give you a treat, okay? This is your positive reward. It's the yes or a click exactly when the dog does what it is that you want them to do. Um, so I'm gonna juxtapose that with the um, positive reinforcer, which is good girl, at a girl, which just says, I like what you're doing, keep doing that, but it's not exactly what I'm paying for, okay? So I'm gonna pay, I'm gonna give the yes or the click so she knows exactly what it was that she did that I liked. Second, we're gonna need our release word. Um, my release word is okay. So it's not that conversational okay, it sounds like a cuckoo clock. Um, and the dog knows that that's their okay. Um, you can use a word like free or whatever it is that you're using already with your dogs, right? It needs to be easy for you. So whatever you have worked out is great. What we don't wanna use is our come command, our recall command, our calm or here, mine's here. Um, we don't want to use that because we don't want to dilute the power of come. 
um, calm is gonna save your life when you're headed toward the road I want calm is gonna be that really great thing when you get to me um, so we don't want it just for casual use of okay you can get up off of your uh, place in order to do something else um, so uh, I use uh, yes for my positive reward marker um, I'm often saying good girl at a girl uh, for my positive reinforcer my release word okay <laughs> I got cuckoo clock now I'm gonna go ahead and mention negative reward marker and that I think is important to tell people about at an early stage um, it's um, it's used only when a dog knows the behavior very well um, has the word for it already um, and uh, uh, they but they didn't do it exactly right or they didn't do it all the way so we would use a negative reward marker in that case just to say I'm not gonna give you a positive reward marker on that because it wasn't hundred percent try again and my negative reward marker is whoopsie and you'll hear me do that when I work with C whoopsie is exactly where right just like the positive reward marker a negative reward marker goes exactly where you went wrong little whoopsie and she knows she needs to come try it again so the reason why I bring up the negative reward marker not because you're going to use it in your shaping because you're not right you only use that negative reward marker after a dog already knows the behavior has done it dozens of times they're really good at it not a problem um, but I bring it up because we want a, a negative reward marker that doesn't sound like get off the furniture or stay out of the trash or whatever the no word or the uh, uh word is when I was given from my mother um, that says that's a bad behavior because what we need our dogs to do when we train them to do tricks or we train them to do performance sports is we want them to offer us behaviors <laughs> offer us a bunch of behaviors so you're sit you're down you're shake you roll over offer me all those things until I give you the, tell you that it's the right one um, so I need a dog that doesn't think that they might get the bad dog sound <laughs> they need to be willing to offer to try to get out there and and uh, give me some for instance and um, be bold enough to do that so we're gonna use our yes our positive reward marker we're gonna use our release word mine's okay um, and just bring up the negative reward markers so that you know that when you're training you need a, a pleasant <laughs> sounding that's not quite it um, and we don't use the no sound off the furniture out of the trash that one so shaping go to place is what Kathy will demonstrate with us with her puppy um, we first just want the dog to interact with the mat um, and I'm thinking if it's a puppy it's probably easiest to put the mat between you and the puppy because you probably already have that calm or that desire to come toward you um, and when they get onto the mat that's when you'll click or yes and treat. Click and treat or yes and treat. Um, now, dogs learn by trial and error, right? So they did something good, but they're not sure what it was. So they have to try it again. So we take the dog off the mat, just move them to the side and wait for them to interact with the mat again. Um, no command yet. Um, because until we have the full behavior totally together, we just might use a generic go. If you have to say something, I'm a person, something has to come out of my mouth in order to tell the dog to do something. So I just use generic go. Um, when, when the behavior is all complete, that's when we'll put a name with it. Um, so the dog starts to interact with a mat, maybe one paw. Um, now you're going to keep raising your criteria so a dog comes back to the mat now we've got two paws oh click and treat good you're getting more involved with the mat great um, and once I get multiple feet on the mat I'm no longer gonna click or treat one or two feet on the mat so it was just a, a successive uh, uh, series of raising the criteria um, until all the way to the full behavior which is onto the mat and down down and face me typically um onto the mat down and face me jackpot okay so lots and lots of treats lots of treats to stay there and then you're going to work on your stay intermittent treats as you move um <laughs> dog is entering the room <laughs> um so intermittent treats while you move around um and away back and away from uh from the dog on the mat and then at a point you'll use your release word uh, to release them 
and bring them to you for another treatment. So they did their uh, place, they're down on the mat um, nicely, and they did that for long enough. You've released them and they get another treat for that. Okay, and then you go on to another trick, uh, start another session another time. You wanna reinforce that in different rooms, um, different links, because what you wanna be able to do is take this mat on vacation or to the kennel or to a friend's house wherever you maybe leave your dog when you're not with them and that that's their comfortable safe place um I, here's the ideal application of this so one family member is going to practice reinforcing the go to place stay and family member number two is going to go to the doorbell ring the doorbell no guests you know don't make it too complicated but we ring the doorbell we go to place, we reward like crazy. Uh, maybe a few minutes later, we ring the doorbell again, we go to place, reward like crazy. Now we're gonna start to associate doorbell with go to place. And that way, when a delivery comes or, or uh, friends come to visit, dog is on place. And until the guests get in safely or the delivery gets brought in and put away safely, then the dog is safely out of your way. Um, and not a hazard to, to anyone or to themselves being in the way. So that's what we're headed for. So I love go to place for every day around the house, safety and security, but it also transitions really well to some obedience and agility behaviors that you need um, if you're gonna do those sports. So um, I'm gonna use my experienced dog Z to show you some of these. And uh, my neighbor to the north, Kathy Rogers, um, is good enough to show us the early puppy shaping behaviors of go to place with her seven month old Seely. Here's Z. An experienced dog like Z is just gonna try and interact with the mat. She's not gonna wait for me uh, to, to go one foot by two foot by three feet. She's just gonna start trying things like she is here. She's trying to sit, it's not working, trying to sit, not working. Come on, Z, think of one other thing that you could do that would make my, oh, there it is. Good girl. So I'm gonna give her a lot of rewards for doing that. And that is our place right there. Good girl. Once we have our place command, we can use it for other things like the beginner novice stay, right? When you finish your foundations obedience class and you wanna start competing in obedience, you'll start with the beginner novice and the stay is in the middle of the room while you walk around the ring and then return to the dog. You're gonna return behind your dog and come to heel position, okay, and release. Once we have a dog that's really comfortable on place, we can begin sending them away from us, which is an important early agility behavior. Um, we can send them to our left. We can send them to our right and they're comfortable on place either way, which is exactly what we want to train agility. So once we know our dog will send away, we can set this up um, in a little more complicated fashion and we can ask the dog to go to the place on their way back to us. Um, it's a little more complicated than a recall, but boy, that comfortable place out there is just such a nice place for them to go and to feel confident that they're getting it right. Um, and that's really what we want for our dogs is for them to feel confident when they're working with us. So one last Recall this way, this time we're gonna to ask to go to the right place as opposed to the left, and that's it. Good girl. Now we have a great tool for making the dog feel confident when they're away from us, and we can do directed jumping in utility obedience.